Hello, this is Vern, and today I'm going to share a rare glimpse into seven core emotional needs that awesome men have but are unlikely to know how to verbalize and express to you so you can internalize them, leave them, and gain a definite edge in your ability to become unquestionably valuable and even more so irreplaceable to a man. Hello, this is Vern. Welcome to another edition of VernMendez.com. If you'd like to learn how to attract your ideal life partner, which includes a spiritual connection, a physical connection, an emotional connection, without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques that don't really work long term, then make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. High level, there's gonna be three different experiences that men who are caliber men, the way you might consider them, somebody who's generous, a guy who's conscious, a guy who's ambitious, a guy who's intelligent, a guy who has good looks. If you want to connect with someone like that, there's a few things that men need. And high level, there's three spheres. The first one has to do with visceral connection. Visceral connection has to do with sparks, has to do with chemistry, has to do with sexual desire. Even whether you actualize it into having sex, it's a different story. You can still delay that, but there's still there can be sexual tension, there can be chemistry taking place. If this does not develop over the course of a short, relatively short amount of time, then he's unlikely to follow through and sacrifice and give and do whatever it needs, needs to happen to pursue you and to stand by your side. Also needs to be present is emotional safety. Emotional safety means that men, and I include myself in this category, most of us live with some level, sometimes high degree, sometimes low degree, but all, always some level of repressed shame, of repressed fear, of repressed insecurity. So emotional safety means that you can create, co-create a space where he can be himself. He can do so respectfully, but he can do that without being judged. He can do that without getting metaphorically punched in the nuts because you might get triggered with his expression, right? I'm not talking about disrespect. I'm not talking about him being mean or anything like that. That's a different story. I'm talking about him being himself and you being able to hold space for that, just like he can hold space for you. The third one has to do with emotional surprise. Why? And this is an oxymoron. Seems like it, but this is what we, the level of sophistication we seek in relationships is such that we don't just want something safe. We want something safe that includes adventure, that includes edge, that includes surprise, that includes difference, that includes spontaneity. Why? Because without it, relationships get boring. If there's just too much of that, then relationships get too scary. So we need a healthy combination and we all have different levels of how much we need of that, which is why it's so important for you to figure out who you are and who you're connecting with before you actually commit and get engaged or married, right? Because you want to make sure that your balances are kind of in the same vicinity. They may not be exactly the same, but you want to be able to provide that emotional spark, that emotional edge of, I will never get tired of getting to know you because I there's so much in you that is growing and evolving and and i just can't get enough of this it's just amazing that's the spark and the surprise the other one is but you're safe and you understand me and you respect me and you don't judge me when i express my vulnerable side to you so that's kind of like the essence of it now this sounds too abstract and it is so i'm going to actualize it for you today in seven specific actions and stances you can have that can facilitate this for you now the first uh, need that men have that are unlikely to know how to express and verbalize is a, a feeling and a sense of a live awakening. A live awakening means that a man can be going through life in a very specific mindset and a very specific way of being and the connection with you, your presence, the thought of you, the way you show up, the way you engage, the way you connect, the way you express, all of that creates a feeling of almost like a flower blossoming in your heart and warming up your entire nervous system and body in a way that no heater can do, in a way that you can't do on your own. And that means that, I mean, I, there's probably hundreds of videos I have on the subject. You can just go to the channel and just watch pretty much any of my videos will have some level of here's how you can become more alive. Here's how you can express more of you. Here's how you can connect to that part of you that when connected, when activated, can be 20 times stronger in attracting men because you feel happy with your life. Yes, you want a relationship, but you come from a place of abundance. You come from a place of fullness. You come from a place of radiance. Radiance is the key. Light is the expression of that radiance. And the effect in a man's heart is a feeling of, I am more alive right now through my connection with you 
than once I run up and down the mountain listening to Rocky Balboa from the 80s, right? Like, when I connect with you, uh, there's something magical that takes place in my heart that I can't really express that makes me feel more alive. And that feeling of alive, that gift of aliveness you bring me, and I feel obliged to help and heal in any way I can and protect and serve, right? Second one is emotional clarity. Emotional clarity is something that men crave and need, but may not have the words to express. Uh, and that means that you have the ownership of your feelings and that you get a chance to not just understand your feelings, but also express what your feelings mean in terms of action, in terms of needs, in terms of expectations, in terms of dreams. Here's why, because you are sometimes women, which are an incredibly mysterious uh, type of human to men, and I include myself, and I've dedicated years and years and years to understanding women, and I still find that women are incredibly mysterious and uh, an enigma in so many different ways. So most men have that feeling as well, but when you are going through something, you're going through an experience feeling, uh, whether it's a good time or a bad time, and, and you have the capacity to kind of, in the best way you can, say, here's what's going on right now in my heart, here's what I hope, here's what I want, here's how I, that, that thing you did made me feel, right? Because the opposite of understanding your feelings and expressing them in a healthy way is not understanding your feelings, but feeling them anyways, right? And feeling like just a sense of unease and pain and anger and, and frustration and sadness and anxiety, and then expressing them in an unhealthy way where you can be passive aggressive with a guy instead of he, and he has no idea what's happening, but you do kind of more than him. And he's still feeling the wrath of your disdain, for example, uh, whether you're a, uh, maybe a cold shoulder or a cold queen for him, for, the, for him in that moment. And he understand he doesn't understand why you're running away, whether you respond in anger for something that seems so subtle because you're actually making him pay for the 15 other times he did something without knowing that he did it, without you expressing it, and now he's getting a nuclear explosion of un, unexpected proportions, and you might feel in that moment that he deserves it, but he may just be blinded at the whole thing. So I think that men thrive with clarity, men thrive with guidance, men thrive with expressiveness. So the more you understand and something as simple as asking yourself, what am I feeling right now? What does that really mean? And what do I hope to feel? And can he help in any way for me to feel that way? It's your responsibility to express it, right? The more you can do that, the more of a chance you have to whatever guy you end up connecting with, him feeling this is new, this is fresh, this is different. I feel understood. I feel now I have the keys to the kingdom. I know I can win because she told me right now that what she's looking for is space and here's why. But it doesn't mean she doesn't love me. It just means that she's, I mean, whatever it is that you're expressing to him, the clear emotionally it is the, the more you stand to thrive. Number three, passionate witness. Passionate witness means uh, men are going to value you in different ways. And the full spectrum of a man valuing you is understanding in some way you and experiencing you at your best, not just in smiling, flirty him, but the world around you that makes you a capable and amazing human being. Right? So this is the principle that attraction doesn't only grow through connection. Attraction grows through some level of separation and distance. Right? I'm not talking years of distance, but I'm talking about stepping back and witnessing your partner, in this case, this man witnessing you in your element, doing what you do best, whether it's a conversation around the passionate things you're, that make you you, whether it's him having some glimpse because you invite him to that, to see what your world is like, to see you in your competent field, so that he has one more element, one more three-dimensional way of experiencing and putting you in the map. And he, he gets the clarity, the connection, the witness, the flirtiness, the friendship, but he also gets a sight to see another part of you that is very unique and that is very, pretty awesome. I mean, the way you do things. And with if, if you feel like he might feel intimidated, then you're not doing him any service by not expressing yourself and not inviting him to be part of your world or not allowing him through time to watch you in your element because he can feel a higher degree of attraction once he recognizes your value in different contexts in life beyond just the personal one. Before I go into steps four through seven, I have a personal invitation for you. If you're watching this video and you're single, uh, my hypothesis is there's a high likelihood that you do not understand yet 
the number one reason why you're still single. You may understand a few bits and pieces, you might have some of the effects and be working on those, but if you understand the core of why you're still single, you can change it. And if you change that, then other things that you might be working on that are not really working for you right now can change too. All you have to do if you want to understand this is, I created a quiz, it took me quite a bit of time to put all this together, but here's the good news. It only takes you 60 seconds to go to the first link in the description of this video, you will see a page that looks like this, answer a few simple questions, and in the next 60 seconds, you'll have the number one reason, a report with the number one reason why you're still single, and better yet, for your specific challenge, what is the next immediate step you can do to, tar to start changing it, to, to do a, a 180 on it, and attract the kind of man you want. Number four, number four is engage curiosity versus stereotyping. Here's what I mean. If you have, like many of the women I've had the blessing of connecting with, experienced shit and bad things and betrayal and disappointment and getting ghosted and getting sidetracked and wasting time with men, then it's not uncommon for you to connect with someone and immediately start putting that man into a specific box, let's say. Sometimes that box is very accurate, sometimes that box is nothing like what the guy is, but it's a caricature of what the man is, or it's a stereotypical version of that man. So when someone is showing up in your life, when somebody's showing you signs of being a good guy, uh, a guy who is hungry to get to know you, and he says something or does something that you don't fully understand, there would be a high propensity for you to say, this is exactly what it means, I'm not even gonna ask, like, you're out. So, so long as that's not something that's obviously blatantly disrespectful or, or something that's really like a, against your values, if you're triggered but you're not really understand if it's the case, then you need to ask. You need to have the courage to say, here's what's going on and here's what I'm interpreting. Am I hot or cold? Tell me more about this. Or last time you did this, I felt this way. Can you tell me more about why you did it? Because it didn't feel good. And then he might share something that surprises you. He might apologize in a way that really means something and stop doing it. So when you connect with a man, be curious and be engaging in wanting to know more about it within reason versus immediately stereotyping him and saying, you're just like this, all this other man that may or may not be true. Number five is he needs to feel your high value and he needs to feel your self-worth without that he doesn't feel as valuable and he's not going to do as many things to get to connect with you. He's not, going to, he's not going to have an urgency to move things forward because in his mind, I mean, you're going to be there no matter what. And that's not the case. So high value means that you understand what your standards are and that you connect with them in such a way that you allow him the privilege of becoming the best possible human slash man as a result of your interactions. And the same thing will happen between you and being with him. Here's what I mean. There is nothing like an intimate relationship to trigger all your insecurities and all your fears. There's nothing like an intimate relationship to get you to work on your shit and to become a better human being. There is that propensity in men, I include myself in this category, to be more selfish, to be more about me, about pleasure versus long-term fulfillment. And when you show up in a way where you're providing the energy, the aliveness, the passion, all the cool things we're talking about, but you also have a very clear sense of here's what I need to move forward. Here's what my standards are. Here's what I'm not willing to put up with. Here's what I see in you. And I ask you and invite you to be that version of you. When you can do that with grace, when you can do that without pushing, but with almost like this is what I'm looking for and great if you step into it, also great if you don't, I would be sad, but I, I really I really need, to, this is something I need for myself, I cannot live without. When you have that attitude, most men who have an ounce of intelligence will actually choose to, instead of stepping down and becoming children, step up and become stronger men. Number six is reinforce gratitude. Now that we're talking about this, well, yeah, it's cool for you to show up in such a way that a guy has to become the lesser, uh, selfish version of him, the more generous version of him, but when he does that, sometimes I have found that women in a fear of being vulnerable and a fear of what if he stops doing it because now he got the praise, no, 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 reinforce gratitude is a thing to do. When he's doing something right, when you catch him doing something right, when you catch him doing something that's difficult, when you catch him doing something courageous, especially as he's growing and expanding in a, some internal heroic way to be a better man for you, 
then having the courage and having the presence to say, thank you so much for this thing. We've been talking about this for months and you did it for the first time here. And I know that we're still have some way to go, but my God, thank you so much for, for that because it means, it means so much to me. Guess what happens when you say that to him? That's music to his ears. Now he knows what I'm doing actually works, not just in her voice, in the feeling that she has inside. I want to be stronger for her. I want to be better for her. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it again. So reinforcing that gratitude, that those experiences, reinforces those exper reinforcing those experiences that make you feel like progress, that make you feel seen, that make you feel heard, uh, I think will go a long way because most men go through life without giving that to themselves and without getting that from anyone. Number seven is unrepressed passion. And I'm not talking about you meet a guy and unrepressed passion then. No, I'm talking about when a guy is in your life. You have an exclusive relationship with him, pretty much. I mean, you're not doing it before then. I think it's too early, but you have an exclusive relationship with him. There's still that thing where I'm going to hold this part of myself for myself. I'm not going to talk about all my needs and wants in intimacy and sexuality included. So the face of experimentation, the face of fantasy, the face of true raw vulnerability in terms of what you want, what you see, what you hope for, and the same for him doesn't mean that you'll reach a consensus, but you can reach a far more encompassing experience of life if you have the courage of when you feel something for him, when the way you touch him, the way you give in to his connection, the way you express yourself with him, the way you kiss him, the way you hug him, the way you you don't leave anything on the table, basically. You're not holding it back for some day, perhaps, when... No, I mean, once there's a certain level of agreement and friendship and connection, then unrepressed passion is going to draw him closer to you than you can imagine, because he's going to feel things from you that he's probably never felt in his life. And when he experiences that, there's no one in the world that can even come close to that, because he, he's validated, he's seen, he's loved, he's self-expressed, he's... There's an edge to the growth because it's not just like, this is a done deal. There's so much more for us to explore. That type of unrepressed passion will go such a long way into you becoming his unequivocal, direct, personal, and forever choice. Hope this is helpful and useful. If it is, please go to the first link in the description to figure out what's the number of wins when you're still single. If you like this video, click like, thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Share it with a friend. There's someone that you know who needs to hear this, who's losing hope about love. And if you share this with her, then she might start doing something about herself in such a way that she becomes not just a better lover for a man, but a more fulfilled human being. And last but not least, if you're watching this, listening to my voice right now, you want more help in the videos, you want more help in the quiz, then I offer coaching to a select group of women to go through all the stages we're talking about right now with guidance, with accountability, and in a fraction of the time it would take you to do it alone. If that might be you, you think that might be you, then second link in the description will allow you to apply to work with me. Thank you so much for allowing me into your heart, into your home, into your consciousness. <laughs> and as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.